Hey everybody, this time around I want to talk about contentment. And the reason I want to talk about contentment is because by and large, I'm a person who tends to not be very content. Uh, case in point, yesterday was the keynote address of the Apple Corporation and they unveiled some new updates to the MacBook Pro and uh, the new operating system for the iPad and the iPhone. And these are good updates, you know, updates aren't bad things, generally speaking, uh, unless we're talking about Facebook, in case, you know, because sometimes those updates are really annoying, but it's a free service, so you can't complain too much. Uh, either way, there tends to be this feeling, though, that goes along with these updates, and it's, what I have now is no longer good enough. And so, uh, it, it started to kind of bother me, and then I started thinking, well, Calvin... You have a, a MacBook Pro, uh, an iPad, an iMac, and an iPhone, and all of them are in perfect working condition. Well, okay, my iPhone is no longer in perfect working condition. If you look at that, it's a little cracked. I dropped it on the ground, so that does need to be replaced, or at least a screen needs to be replaced. But other than that, all of my Apple products work just fine. Uh, all of them are just a couple years old. None of them have ever had to go in for service. All of them have plenty of space. They all uh, have great speed. I've never had a complaint uh, with, with any of them, but with each new update that comes out, I feel like what I have is not good enough. And they do a very good job of making you feel like, well, what you had before, uh, we probably shouldn't have even sold you. That's almost the feeling that you get from these Apple keynote addresses. And so there I was feeling like, wow, you know, I, what I have isn't isn't good enough and so it really tapped into that feeling of discontent that so many consumers have when something new rolls out then there's you know my dating life in my dating life it's it's kind of worked out uh, in such a way that I kind of liken to buying food at a restaurant and, and women uh, who are listening to this, please don't be offended uh, because I know that you have much more value than food at Applebee's. But uh, when I go to Applebee's, I tend to order the same thing. When I go to any restaurant, I'm a creature of habit and I tend to order the same thing every time I go. I'm not a very adventurous guy when it comes to that. But when I order the, you know, the chicken fettuccine Alfredo at Applebee's, which I love, and I'm very content with when I when it arrives every time I order it and every time it gets to me I'm happy with it until that skillet walks by and you hear it you know popping and sizzling and you smell it and you're like oh man I should have gotten that sizzler platter that fajita platter and and here's the thing though I've had that thing I've, I've had the fajita platter before and I didn't like it but every time it goes by without fail I feel like, oh, I, I should I should have gotten that instead. Maybe it would have been different this time. And I feel like that's kind of how my dating life goes. Like I get into a relationship with someone, and I'm content with that person, and I like being with that person. I was attracted to them, they were attracted to me, and, and we're both together. And uh, But then she walks by, and I don't know who she is, but she might wear a pair of jeans better than the girl that I'm currently with, or she might you know, wear her shirt a little bit tighter, or you know, whatever. Um, but something draws me to her, and so then in my mind I, I start thinking, oh, you know, wow, what would it be like if I was with her instead of with this other girl, and why didn't I hold out for her, because she looks much better on my arm and, uh, than, than the person that I'm with, and I might know the story, I know the story of the person that I'm with, or I'm getting to know the story of the person with, that I'm with, but I start building this story in my head of, of who she might be, and how much better her story might be, and how much better our story might be if we were together than if I was with the, this other person here. And let's say that I did break up with that person, I got with this other person, uh, then it would continue. I'd be with them, and then another person would walk by, another she would walk by, and I'd start to wonder again. And so I tend to be very discontented uh, in relationships. And uh, I think the reason why so many of them uh, don't work out is because, you know, the women I've been with have pretty much honed in on that fact. And that's something that I continue to wrestle with as I grow up, because I'm 32 now. There's not too many shopping days till Christmas, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so it's time for me to stop thinking like a boy. But I really feel like our culture, by and large, is just very discontented. I think uh, there was a comedian by the name of Louis C.K. who was on a, a late night talk show. I can't remember uh, which uh, late show he was on, but he talked about how 
we have everything we've ever wanted at our, at our fingertips, but nobody's happy. Nobody at all. We are just the most discontented and, and thankless generation that's come along uh, in a very, very long time. And, I, you know, he said it in a very funny way, but it really resonated with me. We're so thankless. We are, you know, so discontented with what we have. And this trickles down into the church, too. You know, we talk about how Scripture says that we're supposed to be content. You know, as long as we have food on our plate and clothes on our back, we're content. We read the words of Paul. We read the words of Jesus. Both of them telling us to be content. You see people in the Bible who are discontent, and then they go after something they think will make them content. All sorts of bad things happen. And then God kind of has to rescue them. You know, essentially that's how you know, sin even entered into the world. You know, uh, Adam and Eve, discontent with having a relationship with the living God, walking with them in the garden. They wanted to have their eyes open like a God. And so they ate from the, the fruit of the tree. And so all of these problems have continued and compounded since that time. So discontentment in the garden to discontentment to now. Uh, but in the church, we talk about being content. You know, be content. You just be content with what you have. But I think we've convinced ourselves uh, that we are content with what we have while we're still also pursuing this American dream. And I'm not saying it's wrong to to have nice things. I have a nice 50-inch plasma screen TV. As I've already said, I have a lot of uh, Apple products. But as I'm thinking through what it looks like for me to move into the city of Detroit in the next, you know, you know, 18 months or so. I'm thinking about what I could get rid of. What could my life be like if I got rid of some of this stuff? Would I be content without what I have? Because I feel like a lot of people, including myself, say, I'm content, I'm content, I'm content. But if any one or two things were taken away from us, you know, you know, things that are completely frivolous. I'm not talking about like losing your, your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend. Those are like big transitions or losing a child or something like that. But if we lost, you know, like if I lost my iMac, I know I'd be, you know, devastated. Not, not like losing a child, but I'd be pretty upset about that. And I don't know, you know, how I'd get along without it. If I, I always say, you know, how did I have life before Facebook? How did I have life before I had my iPhone, before I had these things that made my life so much easier and convenient? Uh, I, I think that if I didn't have those things, I wouldn't be content. And I think we have a lot of Christians who are running around saying, I'm content, I'm content, I'm content, be content, be content, be content. But if we had one or two things uh, removed from the equation of our lives, uh, we would not be very content people. We say that we would follow Jesus to the end of the earth, but I can't follow Jesus to the end of my driveway when I think about it. If I didn't have a car, you know, how discontented would I be? If I couldn't if I can do any number of things, if I didn't have any number of amenities uh, available to me, uh, how content would I be? And I don't really have a lot of answers with this. I'm really struggling with this, and I'm praying for God to make me more content with what I have and allowing me to, to simplify uh, things in, in, in radical ways. I have a friend, uh, Michael Swanson, or he's kind of more of an acquaintance, and uh, I kind of made fun of him because he had posted a picture on his Facebook saying that uh, he was simplifying his life, and he had all this stuff, a picture of his apartment, and all this stuff was on the floor, like his mattress and, and uh, you know a lamp and a TV. They are all on the floor, I think. And I said, you're not you're not simplified, you're just poor. He said, no, you know, you'd be surprised, you know, how much more, um, how much more content I am with life, so to speak, is kind of paraphrasing what he said, by, by simplifying things. And that was kind of really eating away at me. He didn't see it in a judging way at all. Um, but it really just kind of stuck with me. And so here I am wrestling now with what does it look like to be content? What does it look like to be content as as a believer in Jesus Christ, when he says, you know, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Look at the lilies of the field, how they labor and spin. They don't worry, you know, where their next meal is going to come from. Uh, they don't, you know, look at the birds of the air. They don't worry where their next meal is going to come from. You know, who, by worrying, has added, uh, you know, even an hour to his own life. And this hasn't been about worrying, but I definitely think that worry and discontentment are are you know, bosom buddies, so to speak. Like, you know, you're worrying about, you know, how am I going to provide for my family? How am I going to, you know, how am I going to, you know, do my work if I don't have the, the newest item? And so we, we stay in this area of discontent and we feel like if we don't stay in that area of discontent, if we, if we ever get, uh, you know, contented, 
uh, with anything in life, we're going to get somehow passed up. And I think that's that's the feeling that I have. Like, I kind of get jealous of people who have the iPad 3. Like, I feel like I've been passed. And essentially, the iPad 1 and the iPad 3 uh, do the exact same thing. The iPad 3 is, like, you know, a little bit thinner and has a little bit more processing power, a little bit nicer camera. But, you know, I have a really high-end camera that I'm recording this on right now that's far better than the iPad 3. But I feel like, oh, if I don't have the iPad 3, I'm not good enough. And so I kind of get jealous of things like that. But really, do I need it? You know, do I need that? Why am I discontented? Because it's not the newest thing? There are people who have no iPads whatsoever, and here I am being ungrateful. So, uh, there's lots of ideas about contentment and gratefulness and worry kind of bouncing around in my head right now. But what I really wanted to do was, uh, you know, challenge believers to stop talking about how contented they are and look at their life uh, and, and be honest about whether they are content. And if they are truly content, um, you know, how content would they be if a few items were removed from, from the equation of their life? That's just kind of the question I want to leave people with, the challenge I want to leave people with. Uh, that's what I'm wrestling with right now, so I wanted to uh, have a few other people wrestle uh, with that uh, with me. So, um, no pithy wisdom, no, uh, no revelations for you, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking on right now. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Still